Welcome to the Bank Marketing Show, the podcast that engages and informs you for success in today's marketplace. It's the show that will make you a better marketer with trends, tactics, and inspiration from experts and industry leaders. If you're wanting to impact your personal success and position your bank as the best choice in your market, you're in the right place. Now let's dive into today's show with your hosts, Chris and Dan. Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of the Bank Marketing Show. I am Dan and I'm here with Chris. Welcome, Chris. Yeah. How's it going, Dan? It's good. It's good. good. Yeah. Um, we've got a little series going here. So I'm excited to continue down the path. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's been interesting. And I've, I've heard from a couple of folks that are really uh, getting a lot, I think, out of this series. The point of this major marketing challenge series being that we're identifying kind of the the big rocks in the jar that regardless of your asset size or, or geographic location, the, these are big marketing challenges that to one degree or another, everybody in in community banking probably is facing. And so that's kind of how we're delivering this value, Dan, is, is pulling them out, dissecting them, and kind of breaking it down by issues and then solutions. So I, yeah. I like that we're going there in, in each series. And today's is no different in a, in a really important and very unfortunately very common one right yeah yeah um well and hey before little 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 teaser here before we get in there i was gonna say if if you're listening to this and thinking hey i've got this problem or i'd love to hear their you know their take on this or send us an email uh get in contact uh, contact at bankmarketingshow.com and let us know uh if there's something you're facing you'd like us to to chat about here we're happy to Happy to do that is probably something we've run into before. Oh, yeah. We've run into it. And uh, going into our third season with the podcast here, you know, it, it is cool when we hear from folks and go, hey, man, what, what do y'all suggest around this challenge or issue or opportunity or something like that? So it's been fun doing that with folks. So yeah, glad you threw that out. Yeah, we usually do that little little request at the end, but I thought I'd throw it in at the beginning today. So, there you go. <laughs> um yeah, but today we're going to talk about scattered marketing, rather mm. avoiding scattered marketing. There you go. Yeah, I I think last time, you know, the last last episode we talked about uh, kind of proactive versus reactive and how strategic planning, uh, planning in general is kind of a, a good way to avoid that, right? If you're if you're marching down a, a predetermined plan, you're just more by definition proactive <laughs> and it helps you kind of when shiny objects come their way during the year. Uh, having that plan helps you stick to the plan rather than kind of jumping off in a different direction. And that plan also helps with a lot of other stuff. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'd love to hear your take too, Chris. But the way I think about scattered marketing is just lots of different messages. You know, if you're a lot of banks try to appeal to everyone all the time. And so that just sounds like, oh, you know, hey, we we need to push deposit accounts or we need to push CDs, loans. And, you know, um, you're throwing out a lot of different messages Sort of, you know, sometimes it can be a, a, a artifact of more reactive marketing. Yeah, uh, like we were talking about last time. But um, really, it's it may feel very organized to you, or you know, you you, you probably think there's a reason. You probably have a reason for everything that you're doing. I'd hope. <laughs> um, but yeah. but what happens is to the customer, it can just seem like you're you're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think the. Another description or, or, or walk out for what you're all over the place looks like is doing a direct mail piece around X product or service. And then you're, 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 you're boosting posts on, uh, meta around something else. And then you're d doing kind of the, the, the local. Uh, sponsorship stuff and and mentioning something else or doing this brand and it, it's it, yeah it, it's not intentional it, it's not planned and Dan here's kind of our disclaimer for for our listeners today okay this is not intended as a criticism it's a reality it's a reality yeah. in in our industry and it's a reality in the marketing segment of of our industry uh, when we say scattered marketing because maybe you can our listeners can grade yourself on a scale of one to ten. But you're somewhere on that scale. And that is the case whether you are a you know, $150 million bank and don't have a full-time marketing director or whether you are a, a, a 300 
hundred million, you know, an asset, and you've got a marketing director that is just so busy that person can't get it all done, you know, therefore is just kind of scattered all over the place, even though that may be a highly effective professional person, you know, or you're a three billion dollar bank and you've got a marketing department and you've got six of you and you're you're plugging away at all of these things, but it's still not, you know, as, as streamlined and efficient as as it could be. So it still qualifies as more scattered than yeah. they could be most effective, right? So yeah, that's I, kind of the qualifier for this discussion, Dan. Sure. I mean, I you know, I think it's you can in five minutes probably go out on Google and find banks that are are advertising one thing on Meta, right? And then the website, the the homepage of the website says something different. And when you drive up to the teller window, there's a different message there. And it's right. It could just it could be that the branch marketing people are doing something different than the you know the loan officers are doing something different than the retail team, and it's just a, a symptom of that lack of coordination or lack of kind of a a plan that everybody is aligned to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing is that there's a we talk about alignment, right? There's aligning. We talk a lot here about aligning message with your target audience. So a lot of banks operate in. That realm of like, hey, we need that we need X, so let's let's push out this message to talk about it. You know, we need more. We we want to open more accounts. We want to raise CD deposits. Uh, there's an urgent issue, or urgent need to do that this quarter, and so let's just. Yeah, and you know, the target audience, the answer to who's the target audience is is our community. It's whoever has money, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Who <laughs> whoever's got extra deposits, and I, I, you know, I tell a lot of my banks like, look, yes. You, you want to attract that like person with the ten million dollars of loose cash that needs a needs a home, but like there's three of those in your community, right? So mm-hmm. like it's really hard. You you got to find them with a relationship, and you probably already know who they are. And so you know that's not who you're trying to reach with your main marketing messages. Who you're trying to reach with your main marketing messages is that customer that you can uniquely help, right? So what what does your bank do differently, and what customer group does that Benefit, you know, you have more flexible loan approvals, or you work great with manufactured homes, or uh, you know, talk to a bank once that their competitor banks in their area had like some long approval process for properties with septic systems and like random mm-hmm. stuff, right? But they they had a more they had a, a way of dealing with that, right? And so they were able to approve stuff early. So you know, that's a really when you get to that level, you can have a really strong message that aligns with that target audience. Um, but if you're just trying to kind of attract everybody, you're going to, you know, get back to like a, a pretty generic message. Absolutely. And, and the big outcome problem there, Dan, uh, that you and I were talking about in leading up to this too is the outcomes. Yeah. It's like, we're, we're, you know, well, you know, we're, n- we're not really, it, and it's the perpetual battle that marketing wants more money and needs more money from the budget and, and could do good things with more money. But then the question is asked by the rest of leadership, well, you know, looking at performance and outcomes and what happened last year and all that. And if the answers to that are not specific and where you want them to be, then maybe part of the reasoning behind that is you try and all these different things and nothing's sticking. Yeah. And the, again, that's scattered. So it results in low performance. And then you say, well, I need more budget. And they're like, what? Why? And, and it's the opposite of one of our mantras, Dan, that you and I talk about all the time, that marketing is an investment. It's not an expense. Yeah. And if it's low performing and it's not really getting results and it's not sticking, then it looks and feels an awful lot like an expense, not an investment that's bringing more return by increasing deposit accounts or loans or whatever. Yep. I have an example here and I got like a direct mail postcard from a credit union. And it was basically, you know, the point was, hey, open a open an account, and but the the giveaway was like a a nylon Velcro wallet with a you know sports team logo on it, and you know, <laughs> I see what they're trying to do, but um, you know, it's a lot of work, right? That that reward, it's a lot of work to open a new. I mean, the, actually, opening a new account's easy. Actually, using it and actually, you know. Trying to you know gain gain people's attention and and make them your make them use you as their primary financial institution. It's a lot of work, right? And so giving away a wallet that I could go find at a gas station for a dollar or two yeah. is not you know is not going to make me do that. But yet 
this campaign came out and, um, you know, I'm guessing it went to, you know, everybody in, in a few different zip codes um, and probably was, a you know, well into the five figures. And this was a bigger, bigger credit union. Yeah. Um, but like probably was a small part of their their marketing budget, but I can't imagine it did anything. Right. I, like I, I, I have this vision, Dan, of in the back of the marketing director's office, there are these boxes back here full of the the Velcro wallets. Yeah. You know, that they were ready to to give away to people. And and there's boxes of them still sitting in the back of the marketing. Yeah. Like that, you know, office. The wallet might be a, 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 some swag you give away at like a you know, you have a booth at a local fair. Yeah. Give stuff away, right? But like that campaign was just one. I didn't know why I was getting the postcard, right? It was just a here are some wallets. <laughs> there wasn't a you know here's a here's a problem that we're solving for people like you. You know, it was just a here we are. Here's a wallet. You know, so I didn't know why I was getting it. I didn't know right like the 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 size of the incentive didn't match the the work that would be involved. And meanwhile, I'm getting other mailers that are like, here's three hundred dollars for opening an account. Mm. You know, so yeah. how is that how is that really, you know, competing? And there was nothing in there about um how that, you know, that institution was gonna help me beyond the wallet, which is right. not a or include a switch kit up. that was gonna make it easy or any of those things. Yeah, right? It was, it right? was the, missing the the real the wallet. The wallet's not solving I have a wallet. Like the wallet's not solving yeah. problem. The wallet would go to my my 10 year old or something. Yep. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, and I just, you know, I don't know what was going on. I don't know that, that credit union, they're big. They've been obviously done some successful stuff, but like, uh, it was just, it's, it, it's a good example of just scattered marketing, grasping yeah. at straws marketing, like just trying to kind of plug a, plug a hole quickly versus mm -hmm. really think about the target. Right. And it's just a kind of an impressive because I'm sure they're spending. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars or more to send out thousands of postcards, and I, I don't know what they're, what I don't know what they got in return. So yeah, Dan, maybe maybe we should do a, a wallet for our listeners. You know, I well, <laughs> right? I just, it's just an idea. I mean, we email us if you want to see nylon wallet. Yeah, <laughs> we we all, thought all about our it. listeners want a bank marketing show trifold nylon. Yeah, for let's wallet. see. We'll run a little test. We'll run a little test. <laughs> uh, yeah. Reach out to us today through the bank marketing show dot com. And yeah. <laughs> um, well, so so flipping the coin, Dan, and talking about solutions for some of this scattered, these scattered marketing issues. You know, and, and you and I jump up and down in this soapbox and and have entire episodes about it and have had uh, guests on that are gurus at, 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 at doing this process too. But it, it, the, the big step number one is having a marketing plan and, and that it can't be just a document. Yep. It can even be a really great marketing plan. And if it's just this and it's just a plan, you know, so there's that. And then you talk about a lot about the alignment with the strategic plan of the bank. Yeah. I I, so I, I think there's a there's a few different levels of planning, right? And and when we do a plan, right, a few different components, right? So start with start with the bank's business plan, the type of stuff of like, hey, we our loan production is you know 200 this year, and we want to grow to 500 in three years or whatever it is, right? And and we're going to do that by reaching these underbanked pockets, uh, demographic pockets in our community, or mm -hmm. opening a new branch, or you know, what are all those things that the, the bank is planning? Then you can kind of do a, a marketing strategic plan and say, okay, well, to we need to reach X demographic group. And we think 100 loans a year, are, it's realistic for 100 loans a year to come from that group. How do, we, how do we penetrate that group, right? Where do we need to be? Where, where does that group hang out in physically in the, um, in the market and digitally? Um, how do we make a presence there? Is that paid ads? Is that content? Like, what what is it? And that's more like the strategic marketing level, right? And then you get into like the messaging and um, mm -hmm. the hopes and goals and fears, you know, the customer uh, persona type of stuff. That's all the strategic marketing plan. That's the, the you know the strategic marketing plan is the stuff that changes very slowly, changes over the course of a couple of years, right? And then you can break it down to a you know 
a more tactical plan. I tend to think about, tend to do that, think about it in, in you know, quarterly or, or half year iterations, right? Um, maybe you can plan out like themes a little longer, like you know your bank's anniversary is coming up uh, in a couple quarters. And so you can kind of plan that out. But like, it's really hard to plan specifically. Like what's the specific message we're going to have? Um, how much budget are we going to assign to each channel? How, right, like what format? Is it a Reels campaign or is it a you know static image campaign? It's hard to plan those details out too far in advance. So I think about those quarterly. But you start with the strategic planning and kind of break it down of like, hey, our goal is 50% more loan production in five years. Like we need 10% more this year, right? Where is that going to come from? You know, let's start this quarter with these three tactics and test them. And then at the end of the quarter, you can um, assess performance and change, ta- you know, adjust the tactics, adjust the the budget spend, and you know, go from there. Is there stuff like, do you do you need video, right? Um, we have work with a few banks that really want to do video, but mm-hmm. we kind of tell them, hey, before you do video or before you like triple your media spend, you need to get some other stuff in order first. Yeah, clean up the website. Right. How are you, you know? going to use it? How are you going to yeah. launch that out? Right. Yeah. You know, so it's like say the 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 marketing plan kind of gets into those those levels of tactics, and that's where that's where you can you know you you take the messages you should have in your strategic plan and kind of figure out where they're going to go and how they're going to interact in in the market. Yeah, yeah, those that's great thoughts. You know, uh, Dan, decades ago, I I helped lead a a behavioral health business. And, you know, the, the the big mantra around that in human behavior is the first step to change is surrender. Okay. And that's applicable to this about scattered marketing for community banks and credit unions as well is, you know, again, insanity, trying to do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So on the solution okay. side to to surrender and then do differently looks something like one one of a couple of examples, you know. One of those is a few years ago we got a call from a, a, a North Mississippi uh, small bank client of ours, and the CEO called and said, "Okay, I'm retiring in a few short years, and between now and then, I want to transform our brand and go from stale small town whatever and and you know regional bank competitors beating the snot out of us, and I want to change that." So, and he said, but we're splitting our duties between me and our IT person and our CFO and then, and, and our head teller chips in and all that. That was their marketing, right? And so while, while that's a small bank example, you know, again, it, 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 it also happens in, you know, with one of our $3 billion clients that has a marketing team. And, and so the, the step to change that you know, was going, okay, we cannot expect different results unless we make a significant change in that. So yeah. in that case, the solution was to bring us in and we did the things you're talking about, you know, did a strategic plan and a direction and, and now they have a, a marketing manager on our team and we're doing all the implementation and it's literally shifting the brand, uh, the, the brand. That's not to toot our horn. You know, another example of it in a much larger multi-billion dollar bank that I've seen too, is the marketing director got sick and tired of this scattered approach and went to the leadership of the bank and said, for the month of January, we're going to meet for an hour and a half every Thursday for January. And, I, and, I, and I'm not asking. And you know, you guys want greater impact for these hundreds of thousands of marketing dollars every year. We're going to have to get this on a plan you know, and to do this well, and I've got that, but I've got to have buy-in from the leadership, and then I've got to be able to implement it with Dan, what you talked about, and then breaking it into quarterly iterations and, you know, platform plans and marching this out. But she had been doing that for years and and wasn't getting the support, buy-in, all of those things, and so was just kind of running, running, running. Yeah. And, and then the leadership looking at her going, why are we not getting better results from our marketing dollars? So again, just kind of threw in a white flag, surrendered and said, we're going to do this differently. So those are a couple of examples, man, of it takes a mindset shift sometimes from yeah. where you are to we're tired of being scattered. Okay, what are you going to do about it? So we talked about some solutions and tools, you know, today to do that. 
And it goes back to intentionality and willingness to, to, to make a change and to, you know, to implement it and do it well. So. Yeah. No. And I, I it, 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 it can be hard to sort mm. of step off the plank. <laughs> yeah. Um, to surrender. It can be hard to, to do that. But, and, and there's ways, there's ways I think to, that you don't have to, you know, fully abandon everything you're doing, you know, but that, that can come into planning too, right? Like, you can just keep stuff going like it is, but work on work on these planning, the kind of layers of planning. And part of your plan can be, well, how do we, you know, we're here, we want to get to over here. What's the plan to move between those two points? And, right. um, you know, and and it, it might not happen overnight, um, but rarely, you know, does stuff happen overnight in the banking industry. <laughs> so, you know, if it takes you six months, 12 months to really move away from the scattered stuff to, move from reactive to proactive like that's okay because at the end of the day you you want your bank to be around another 100 years and you know uh the stuff that really makes a difference can take a long time to to implement very well said my friend yeah it's easy to get frustrated when you know we can't change this by between january and march and it's not going to totally shift the direction of the marketing for the bank well right it it's it's a process yeah, yeah. yep well said yeah well, great. Um, you know, Dan, I know that uh, you said this on the front end of the episode, but but both of our agencies, and I know y- you guys at Two Novas in particular, have a really uh, out- outstanding big picture strategic planning process, and 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 my team has you know elements of that around brand and and you know ongoing implementation of marketing services and everything else. So so I wanted to reiterate w- what you offered on the front end of the the episode here is reach out to us. You know, part of the reason that you and I are doing this show is because we both have a passion for making a difference for for people. And a great way to do that is if you guys as listeners reach out to us and go, hey, man, we're stuck on X. What do you all think? Or what whatever, you know, and, and we're happy to have conversations. So uh, yep. you, you guys as our listeners, um, pull, pull the trigger on that. Reach out and <laughs> let us serve you well you know, and, and, and have a discussion and maybe share some ideas or best practices for, from some of our client base that, that may help you well. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. One other, um, one other little thing around that note, if you're, don't want to engage directly with a human, <laughs> we, <laughs> we've, uh, uh, we are, we are testing out a little, uh, cool little chatbot tool on our, uh, website, bankmarketingshow.com. Um, if you go there, there's a little pop up at the bottom that we have. It's a little like chat GPT style thing um, that has been trained on all the content from this podcast uh, yeah. the last over the last two over two years, years worth of content. Uh, yeah, it'll spit out cool answers. Yeah, it knows it all. So um, if you're stuck on a question, um, you know you want to get a random you know, bots thought on stuff. It actually has some of our, you know, all of our knowledge and all the kind of the knowledge of the guests uh, from all of our episodes. So um, get, go to bankmarketingshow.com. You can ask it questions. Um, it will spit out answers and then it will tell you, oh, and by the way, you should listen to this episode. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's kind of a cool tool. It's it's free. It's just sitting there. Um, so we'd love uh, love to see you, see, see you folks test it out and let us know what you think and um, hopefully get some get some insights from it. And um, yeah, we hope it's hope it's a useful thing. And can give you some concrete answers that you can then copy and paste that are, uh, you know, things you can show your your team. Yeah. Like, look, hey, the bank marketing show guys said, you know, the the uh, the answer to this about social media or, you know, uh, strategic planning or whatever the case may be, you know, content, et cetera. This, this is some specific directions that they gave us. So yeah, yeah go jump on it and use it. Yeah. Very good. Well, Dan, um, looking forward to continuing through this series. And then I know we have got um, some really dynamic guests lined up. Actually, I was going to say the next couple of months, but beyond that. Um, so we've got some great industry leader folks and uh, specialists in different marketing categories coming up as well. So look, looking forward to the days ahead. Yeah, likewise. Like and, like and subscribe. And uh, we'll keep, keep letting you know when... Uh, when new stuff's coming out. We also have a uh, one more last little plug. Um, we also have the Bank Marketing Minute, our mm-hmm. kind of companion newsletter to this that we'll, we send out a uh, email every other week when um, 
podcast episodes are released. So you go to bankmarketingminute.com, sign up for that and get notifi- no, a notification when a new episode comes out and a, a few paragraphs of you know additional thoughts on uh, on each episode too. So really is a very useful one, two minute read uh, that, that's kind of summary and additional points around specific topics. So uh, yep. great thought, Dan. Yep. And All yeah, right. we'll uh, see you down the line. And uh, thanks for for listening in, as 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 we say every time. And uh, look forward to bringing some great guests and some more topics to you soon. You got it. See you soon. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. To go deeper or get access to some of the valuable nuggets from today's show, go to bankmarketingshow.com. There you'll find episodes, links to resources, and much more. Be sure to subscribe wherever you find your podcasts and join us next time.